All right. We are now live. And we are beginning. So as soon as you see it, go ahead and share it. And start a watch party. Yep, we are now live, everyone. Wonderful. All right. And we should be in speaker view. Go right on ahead, Pastor Hudson, sir. Well, I want to take this opportunity uh, to say good evening to everyone and welcome to Morning Glory Baptist Church, our virtue uh, three-day summer night revival. Uh, we're excited about what God is doing on tonight, and we ask that each of you would join in with us each nightly Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night of this week at 7 p.m. I am the host pastor, uh, uh, and uh, next up, we will have our scripture by Deacon Gregory Pollard, who is the chairman of our deacon board at Morning Glory Baptist Church, followed by prayer by none other than my close friend, Reverend Vincent Pryor, pastor of New Mount Zion Baptist Church, Gloucester, Virginia, and then following him, we will have the welcome by none other than Minister and First Lady Patsy Hudson of Morning Glory Baptist Church, Gloucester, Virginia, in that order. Amen. Amen. Good evening, saints. I'll be reading from the book of Romans, chapter 10, and I'm going to be reading about 14 verses. And it reads, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant yes, of yeah. God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down from above? Or who shall descend into the deep, that is, to bring Christ up again from the dead? But what saith it? The word is near thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For the heart, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? I have read Romans Chapter 10, verses 1 through 14. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Amen. This is network bandwidth is low. Go ahead, Pastor. Whoever is next. Go ahead, Patsy. Go ahead, Patsy. Go ahead, Patsy. Go ahead, Patsy. 
Greetings to all of you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to the Morning Glory Baptist Church 2020 Summer Revival. On behalf of our pastor, Reverend Daryl A. Hudson, Sr., myself, and the entire body of Christ at Morning Glory Baptist Church in Gloucester, Virginia, we are so excited and so very glad that you are taking this time to be present with us by teleconference, Facebook Live, and Zoom to worship the Lord our God in this summer revival service. Please join us as we pray for the Holy Spirit to pour out upon us in great abundance during this three-day period so that many people will be revived back to the Lord. Thank you for attending our 2020 virtual summer revival and may God richly bless you. Okay. All right, Pastor, I believe it is uh, time for praise and worship right about now. And I believe our praise and worship leader from over at Dominion Outreach Worship Center will lead us in a few songs. Let's just turn it over to her now as she prepares to lead us. Good evening, everybody. How about you know, just know that Jesus is able to do all. Exceeding and abundant is what the Bible tells us. But we know that he will open doors that we didn't even know were closed in front of us. But he'll open those doors just for us. Amen. Amen. Hey. <laughs> opens doors that I cannot see. Jesus will. Oh, Jesus, we oh, will make all my decisions for me. Jesus, we yes, Jesus, we. Ooh, opens doors that I, I cannot see. Jesus, we, oh yes, oh yes, Jesus, we. Now who will make all my decisions for me? Jesus will. I know, I know, Jesus will. When I'm in trouble, he gives me a soul. And in the night season, and I don't be Who makes me do right when I would do wrong? Jesus will. Jesus will. When I'm in trouble, he gives me a soul. And in the night season, and all the day Who makes me do right when I, I would do wrong? Jesus, we who I know, Jesus, we oh, yes, oh, yes, Jesus, we I know he will. Oh, yeah, Jesus 
will. I know he will. He said he will. He'll fight my battles if I keep still. I know that he will. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Jesus will. Hallelujah. Jesus will fight all your battles. If you just keep still, he said, be still and know that I am God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise Amen. God. Thank and praise God. Uh, uh, back to the host pastor. Uh, we just got a couple announcements uh, for you. Uh, uh, on Saturday morning, uh, as our prayer time at 8.45 a.m., the morning glory, you certainly you can call in and tune with us uh, on our conference call. Our conference call number is 701-801-6981 at 8.45 a.m. Every Saturday morning, you can call in and have prayer with us. God is good and greatly to be praised. Uh, and also, this coming up Saturday morning, uh, you can meet uh, Minister Donna Freeman, as well as Linda Wormley, uh, in the parking lot of Morning Glory Baptist Church, where we will be collecting back to school items. How many know just because there's a pandemic and just because our students are, are going to be doing virtual learning, they still need supplies, amen? And so we still want to be a blessing to them. And we're gonna ask those that would be so kind if you would come out and donate some things in partnership with us and, and be cautious as you're coming on the church property as well. We want to make sure that everybody is wearing their mask and everybody's making sure they're keeping their hands clean. Amen. So we just thank and praise God. At this time, uh, I'm honored and privileged to, to introduce our guest revivalist on tonight. And I just looked at his bio and I just wanted to take a couple of things from the bio. Uh, Dr. Raymond Johnson uh, is an avid proponent of education and a lifelong learner. Dr. Ray Johnson earned a bachelor's degree in business and economics from the University of Maine. Uh, he then received a master's degree in business administration and law and public policies from Regent University. Yes, I know about Regent University, as well as a master's of divinity also from Regent University. He holds a doctor in ministry degree with a concentration in leadership and theology from the Fuller Theological Seminary. Now, this, this preacher, par excellence, was called to preach the gospel at a young age, at the age of 12, after receiving Jesus Christ into his life at the age of nine. Dr. Johnson transitioned a church plant known today as Dominion Outreach Worship Center there in Newport News, Virginia. The ministry has grown from approximately 13 members to hundreds of weekly attendees with a vision of multi-site ministry to the peninsula and beyond. You need to know that Dr. Johnson's commitment to leadership and serving others extends far beyond the walls of the church and flows into the community. Pastor Johnson lives by dominion mandate, walking in dominion and occupying until he comes. After uh, Minister Alatash Kabibi comes back with another selection the next voice that you and I will be here, will be listening to, will be none other than Dr. Ray Johnson, the esteemed pastor of Dominion Outreach Worship Center in Newport News, Virginia. Pastor Ray, I want to hear a word from the Lord on tonight, sir. Preach the word.
you gave me my voice to speak your word to sing all your praises to those who never heard but with my eyes i see a need for more availability I've seen hearts that have been broken so many people to be free Lord I'm available to you do what you say do use me lord to show someone the way and enable me to say to say my story is empty and I I 
Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. Hallelujah. I certainly Amen. hope that we were all blessed by that uh, rendition of I Surrender All and Lord, I'm available to you. I'm excited to be with you all tonight uh, and to be present with you all. Thank you so much, Pastor Darrell uh, Hudson of Morning Glory Baptist Church for inviting me in on tonight and Bless giving you. me the opportunity to be able to speak, uh, to share tonight with everyone. If everyone would go ahead and take a minute and just begin to uh, mute your, your microphones, if you will, mute your microphones, if you will, uh, so that we can ensure that everyone will be able to hear me clearly tonight. And once we get to the end of this, of tonight's session, uh, Pastor Daryl Hudson will come right back to us tonight and share out in our closing. And so I'm so glad to be with each and every person uh, that is here tonight. Thank God that God can use us, but it's dependent upon our surrender before him tonight. I believe the Lord's given us a word tonight to be able to share uh, tonight from the standpoint of us having the moment and opportunity to respond to God's call, God's cause, and respond to the cost of the God's call in our lives. And so if you're just watching us tonight, uh, tonight is the first night of Morning Glory Baptist Church's uh, Summer Revival with Pastor Daryl Hudson. I'm Pastor Ray Johnson from Dominion Outreach Worship Center, and you just heard from Alatash Kabibi, minister-elect, our worship leader at Dominion. And if you would share this real quickly and create the opportunity for as many people as you can to join us tonight, I want to take a few minutes just real quickly to go ahead and share my screen so that everyone will have a chance to be able to see tonight. I've got a few notes and things that I want to share with us on this evening. And let's take a few minutes and let's prepare ourselves uh, to get into the word tonight. I'm sure everyone will be able to see that and everyone will be able to see this. If you're just coming into the room tonight, if you're just coming into the room tonight, uh, this is the beginning of our summer revival tonight with Pastor Daryl Hudson. We'll be meeting nightly each night. And if you look at your screen on the bottom right hand corner, you'll see the meeting ID. Take a few minutes, write that down. It's 823-0766. Again, that's 823-0766. And then the last four digits is 7531. The passcode is revival. Won't somebody just type that into the chat? Those who are inside of the room, type in the word revival. If you're inside of the Zoom room or if you're watching this uh, either on the Morning Glory Baptist Church page or any of the Dominion pages, Dominion Ministries, Walk of Dominion, Millionaire, Dominion Woman, Ray Johnson, or if you're watching this on Alatash Khabibi's page or Minister Daryl Hudson's page, we want you to type in the word revival. I believe that we're in need of a move, of a fresh move from God. And so I want to talk to us tonight from uh, the subject matter of the call. Somebody type this in tonight, if you would, real quickly. I heard you. Somebody type that in. I heard you. I heard you. Come on, let's read this text of scripture tonight comes to us from Exodus chapter 3, verses 1, 2 through 10. Very familiar pericope of scripture tonight. And let's begin to read that. Now, I'm going to take us through, and you just kind of watch on the screen tonight, and then the Lord's going to meet us as we kind of walk through this. Amen, somebody? So the Bible begins to read this way. It's the New King James Version of the scripture. It reads, Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not being consumed. Somebody type in real quickly, I heard you. Type it in real quickly inside of the chat, I heard you. Verse three says, then Moses said, I will turn aside and see the great sight why the bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, I heard you. Somebody type it in, I heard you, or here I am. Verse five, then he said, do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet 
for the place where you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Verse 7 says, And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt, and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from the land to a good and large land. I'm going to say something, say something to somebody tonight who is watching me, who is a part of Morning Glory Baptist Church. Uh, Pastor Hudson, I want to say before I even get into this message, your sanctuary is too small for the move of God that is coming to the county of Gloucester. Let me keep reading tonight. So I've We've come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from the land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey. Somebody say, I heard you. Uh, to the place of the Canaanites, type it in, and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Parasites and the Hivites and the Jebusites and all the other kind of ites. Uh, let me begin to just pray with us tonight and let's get into this word. Father, in Jesus' name, Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, Holy Spirit, uh, that you are with us and that you are present here tonight. And that, God, you're going to speak tonight through this word and that we're going to hear you clearly. Cause each and every one of us to remember the call of God on our lives right in the middle of this pandemic and begin to cause your glory to rest on us. God, we give you the next three nights and we set them aside for your glory. Lord, so that you will receive all the glory and the honor. As a matter of fact, just as our psalmist said, we are available to you right in a season just like this. Use us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody type it in one more time for me. I heard you. I heard you. I heard you. God bless you. Morning glory and the walk of dominion and others who may be watching this evening. Uh, it is no secret our times have changed and environments have changed, people have changed, even our perspectives of how we understand what is happening has changed as well in the time in which we live. And I simply want to remind us tonight uh, that as it relates to the church, the body of Christ, to us as believers, we may not have been aware of the changes, uh, but they have been forthcoming for a while now. How many of you know, just like I know, that the changes that we are experiencing have been underway for a while. Nothing has ever caught God by surprise. And as a matter of fact, God has really strategically aligned us to be prepared to be used by him in the season we're finding ourselves in. We have not lived in a culture of forthrightness and faithfulness and even frugality for a while now. We live in a culture, Pastor Hudson, today of plurality of perversity and impurity. I call it a throwback from yesteryear. We're living in a culture of Babylon in the times that we're in. And as we move forward with our technical advancements, we move further and further away from the simplistic truth of God's word, which is just simply to say this to us tonight. The more, we, the more intelligent we become, the more uh, uh, exposed we become, the more learned we become, uh, the more our ability to utilize mediums and modes just like this uh, tonight as we're bringing the word to people all across the internet and into houses and into homes and all in various places. It seems to me, does it seem to y'all like it seems to me, the further we keep sliding away from the simplistic truth of God's word. Yet the Bible reminds us that the word of God is the same. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That God has not changed his mind about how he plans to win the world and how he plans to draw all men unto himself. And so I'm not, I'm not worried about this season that we're in. I'm not too much concerned about this time that we're in. What I'm concerned about is if we are hearing what God is saying to each of us as individual believers that God wants to use us and that God wants to put an anointing on us in our lives so that he can draw all men to him. I feel preaching early tonight. 
right? Last okay. time I checked, I believe that the Bible said Amen. that if Praise we would Christ. take time to lift Jesus up, if we would lift Jesus up, then he would draw all men all unto himself. Come on, say amen if you can. Yes. Amen. So, so, so listen, let, let me get on into this word tonight. Let me share my screen with us one more time. Remember, take a few seconds and just mute your microphone uh, so that you won't come across uh, on, on the screen with people. Uh, let me go here to this next piece here. Um, the, as much as much as many things have changed, more and more things begin to remain the same. Look at Mark, if you will, the book of Mark, if you will, chapter 12, if you will, with me. And let's look carefully at uh, verses 30 and through 31 on the screen. Let's take a few minutes and let me just read it to you. And it says this, and you shall love the Lord your God, check it out, with all your heart. Somebody say, I heard you. Somebody type it in, I heard you. With all your soul, come on, you ain't typing yet. You ain't saying nothing to nobody in your living room. You, with all your soul, with all you. your might, with all your strength, this is the first commandment, the scripture says. And the second is like it, this you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other greater commandment than these. If I could say it to us simplistically tonight, if I could say it to us so simplistically tonight, in this way, in this sense, and that is that uh, critically important for us uh, to understand that God has not changed his mind about how he plans to use us in the times in which we are in. As a matter of fact, things have gone the way that they have gone so that God can begin to get the glory in the times that we're finding ourselves in. I got good news for us tonight. The good news is because as far as we have slid from these central truths, heaven has not changed its mind about its remedies. I've heard, and I keep hearing this phrase and sentiment, Pastor Hudson, this is what I keep hearing, that church is over because we're not able to gather in the building. I wanna say, let me. can I just act like I would act in my pulpit tonight? Can I say to us, that's just wrong? <laughs> Wrong, 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 <laughs> wrong, 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 wrong. God does not change his mind about how he is going to win the world. He is going to use each and every one of us. And Pastor Hudson, I, I believe what people mean to say is what they mean to say is that church entity is over and that the games of religion is over, but the church is never over. The reason that the church is never over is because the church is not a building. Your edifice, uh, 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 Pastor Hudson, your edifice, uh, 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 Deacon Pollard, is not the church. That's a building. That, ha that houses the church. The church is the blood wash. The church is those names who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I feel preaching early. I'm trying to calm down. Praise the God. church are the people who have given their lives to Jesus, who have become the sanctified, who have become the born again, who are the fire baptized, running for their life. Oh, that right. is the church. And so as the devil is doing everything that he can uh, to try to keep us from gathering together, we are able to use mediums and means like this for us to be able to hear the voice of God and to respond to the call of God in our lives. We are the ones whom Jesus died for, not a building. And what I want to say to us tonight, beloved, is that God uses, prepares, and sends people, hear me now, in order to win people. Can I say it one more time? I said God uses people to win people. I'm going to say it one more again. God uses people in order to win people. Say amen if you can. Yes. Type it inside of the text, uh, inside of the chat, if you will, tonight. So listen, let's go a little bit further with this tonight. Uh, 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 in this text, Moses has heard a thing from God, and he has heard uh, 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 God called to him, and Moses has been on the run from God because Moses is on the backside of the desert, hiding from his call because his passion has gotten in the way of God's process. And before I keep going tonight, 
I'm going to just stop right here and just say to somebody just for a second, let me talk to all the people who have been hiding and running from their call from God. And you think that God has changed his mind about you because we're in the midst of this pandemic. I just want to say to you, don't you get it twisted for yet one minute. If you don't read a scripture, that don't mean you're not in call to ministry. If you're not engaged in cleaning the building, that don't mean you're not called to ministry. If you are not counting the money in the back, that don't mean you're not called to the ministry. I hope somebody's hearing me tonight. If you're not involved in a public a perception or a public a position where somebody sees you and calls your name, that's the kind of stuff that God's trying to break us out of in the church, that if we're not at center stage, if we're not up front, and all of a sudden, we feel like God's not using us, so all of a sudden, we get mad with something and go hide out in the world. This is a beckon, a clarion call to you tonight, and I want to say to you, that nudge that you've been feeling while you're on that job, that, that pull and tug that you've been feeling to minister to somebody, that is God calling you back to your assignment, and you can't go anywhere. Look, somebody type in real quickly, did you hear it? Can you hear it now? Can you hear it now? Somebody type it inside the chat, and if you're watching me by way of a Facebook stream, type it in, can you hear it? Can you hear it now? My God. And so here is the thing tonight. If we're going to be able to respond and hear the call of God on our lives. One of the first things that we've got to get back to doing, y'all, is we've got to get back to recognizing the holy. We've got to come back to the place where we begin to recognize the holy. Now, listen to me tonight. Uh, 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 buildings in and of themselves, they are not holy. It, 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 it is not the communion emblems. It is, it is not so much. Now, they represent symbolically holiness, uh, but, but that is not what holiness is. Holiness has to do with the authenticity of the power of the Lord's presence. It has to do with the character of who he is in each and every one of our lives. Listen to me. The text says that Moses was in the house of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock on the backside of the desert, hear me, uh, 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 desert of the mountain, and he was out there hiding from God. And I want to just remind somebody, this is not the time for you to think you can hide from God just because we're not gathering in the building. This is the time where you've got to put your attention on God, even now, that much more so because God has not changed his mind about his call on your life. Watch the text with me. The text says that God tells Moses to take off his shoes for where he stands is holy ground. Come on, let me go here. Listen, holiness is about the presence of God. It is not about a particular person. It is not about a personality. It is not what we wear. Holiness has to do with the presence of God and how we adjust ourselves to be inside of the Lord's presence. I got to tell us tonight as the church uh, that Jesus, that the church is still needed, that Jesus died for the church. But hear me, it is the church that gives birth to the kingdom. So for everybody that keeps talking about we're in a kingdom season and we're in the kingdom moment, it is the church, those of us who are the blood watch, we give birth to the kingdom of God. Come on, let me go through a few more slides, if you will. If we're going to respond, we've got to recognize the holy. We must recognize that God is holy and that he has called us to be holy and that the Holy Spirit comes to live inside us, the people of God, and he leads and guides us uh, to begin to reach now other people. Come on, I hope somebody is hearing this Please, tonight. Sir. He leads That's us right. into all truth. So we've got to remember just because we're in this season doesn't mean that we stop walking according to the dictates of God's word. Remember this, watch this. Let me give you this scripture right here. I'm gonna put this one on the screen. Watch this. First Corinthians 6 and 19. Come on, I hope this helps somebody tonight. He says, Paul says to the Corinthian church, or oh, do you not know? that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Watch it. Who is in you, whom you have from God, you are not your own. He, God's going to use you in this season when you turn toward him like Moses did and begin to recognize that there is a bush 
that's burning inside your bathroom. There is a bush that's burning inside your living room. I came to talk to somebody tonight. There is a bush that's burning right inside of your den right now. All that is, is that when God utilizes things to get your attention, something supernatural happens that you can't explain. And that's God talking to you to remind you that I have a call on your life and I ain't changed my mind about how I'm going to use you. Can I talk to somebody real quickly about your burning bush experience right now? Can I say this to you tonight? The fact that you have made it through this pandemic and your income has been cut in half or by three quarters, or you're on on, on just a fourth of what it was that you were making, and your lights are still on. I need somebody to type it in real quickly. Can you hear him now? The fact that you don't even know, matter of fact, you done had, you done had symptoms of the coronavirus, but you ain't lost no weight yet. God's been keeping you. Somebody type it in, can you hear him now? It is, uh, listen, I want you to wear your mask. I want you to practice social distancing. I need you to keep on washing your hands, but I gotta say to somebody tonight, it is the power of the living God that is keeping you in a season like we are in right now, and God ain't changed his mind about how he's gonna use you, believer, in the grocery store, how he's gonna use you at the laundromat, how he's going to use you at the YMCA, how he's going to use you while you're with your prayer partner, how he's going to use your social media page. God still has got a call on your life. And even if you might be running from God right now because of your past and because of your experience, I got to tell you tonight, God ain't changed his mind and he's still going to use you messed up, toe up from the flow up because God doesn't call the people who are perfect, but he perfects the people who are called. And I got to remind you tonight, right in the state that you are in, God still plans on using you. You know why I can say that tonight? If you're going to respond to the call of God in your life, not only do you need to remember to recognize the holy, the presence of God, the fact that he is keeping you in a moment like this when you shouldn't be making it right now. But I got to tell you tonight, you are going to be used by God because you just like me and me just like you, we all recognize we need some help. Come on, somebody type it in. I need some help. Somebody type this in and share this real quickly. Tag somebody and say, can you hear him now? I know I need some help. We have to remember, y'all, listen. We have to remember it is God who makes us holy and all of us are in need of some help. Uh, We've got to remember why Moses is in Midian. Because Moses done killed a man and Moses is trying to hide from God because Moses needs some help. I just want to stop early and go back again one more time and tell somebody who has been walking around like they're going to get away from God. It's not working the way that you thought it was going to work because God knows you need some help. Come on, let me put this, let me share my screen with y'all one more again. Yes, sir. I, 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 listen, I, 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 I feel something pushing me right through here. Look, listen, just because you done had a moment somewhere doesn't mean that God has changed his mind. I gotta say this to somebody watching me tonight. God is planning to use people. Now, listen, your church may not be gathering pastor who's watching me or deacon who's watching me or or, or administrator who's watching me tonight. You're trying to figure out how my church is going to move from this point to the next point. What I want to tell you is that it's not the building and it's not so much the technology. That's a vehicle. But it's us, the people. We are the vessels and technology is just a means whereby which the vessel is able to be used. So just because you've got a moment concerning your background and a moment concerning where you have been in terms of your past, that doesn't mean that God's not going to use you. As a matter of fact, last time I checked, my God, I, I, listen, uh, uh, Pastor Hudson, last time I checked, there wasn't anybody that God used that was perfect. Moses is a murderer. David is a conniver. David is an adulterer. David uh, 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 is is somebody, uh, he's a liar sometimes. Come on, you got 
a Saul who is disobedient. Come on, anybody hearing me tonight? You, you've got all kinds of people, Old Testament and New Peter, would, Peter would cuss in a minute, but he was the person who preached out of the same mouth on the day of Pentecost. I want to talk to people tonight who don't feel like God has given you a platform. I want to say to you tonight that your platform is not in the four walls. Your platform is in the community right there where people are. And if you will start opening up your mouth, I'm getting ahead of myself because this is in tomorrow night's message. But if you will start telling your story, then God will get some glory so that when the temple opens back out, people are able to come back into the temple with you because you decided to be a vessel for the Lord. I got to say that to somebody tonight. Moses is trying to hide, but God calls out to him, gets his attention so that God can use him and that God can cause him to understand that I have changed my mind about what I'm going to do in your life. Listen, We've got to remember that God yes, uses people who recognize that they need some help. Listen, I, here, here, here we go. What God often does is, let, let, me, let me say this, God often uses circumstances to get your attention. Do you know what the burning bush was? The burning bush was That's a circumstance right. to simply get Moses' attention. That's, that's all it was. It, it was nothing but a circumstance to get his attention. L let me go back here for a second and say this to somebody who's watching me tonight. The fact that stuff, it can't work the way that you want it to work, that's God getting your attention. My God in here. The stuff that you are walking through in your life right now, you, you're not getting the love that you want. Matter of fact, I'm going to say this to somebody, God won't let them love you right now because if he lets them love you right now, you're going to give them all your attention and then they're going to end up being an idol in your life and you're going to miss the call of God that God has on you to walk that person through a relationship with Jesus Christ so that they get a chance to come to know God. Somebody type it in, can you hear me now? Yes, no, sir. you ain't getting the loan right now. Because if you get the money right now, you're going to act the pure fool. And uh, excuse me, but I'm, 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 I'm an 80s hip hop baby. And you're going to start acting like you done got the vapors. Listen, if it's, if it's in the area of health, God has allowed the health to be the way that it is so that he can get your attention. He's allowed the heartache in your life so that he can get your attention. He's got you dealing with the crisis that you're handling right now so that he can get your attention. You're in the financial hardship that you're in right now so that God can get your attention. Things aren't working the way that you want them to. Let me just say, let me just help a preacher. Let me help a preacher right now watching me it, it, your folk don't need to gather in your church right now because there's too much other stuff, preacher, that's got your attention and God wants you on your face. God wants you to open and incline your ear so that you can hear from heaven the new strategies to be able to win people like we are using tonight. Some of us ain't never had audiences like that's this right. of where you are ministering to thousands of people at one time. God is using this kinds of a means and you may have to adjust your format of how you do what you do in order so that God can be able to use you in this season in order to get your attention. Come on, I'm getting ready to quit and get up out of here right now. Sometimes, not only must we recognize the holy, holiness has to do with where the presence of God is. Not only must we recognize that we need God's help, help understanding that we need God's help has to do with our past. But I want to stay right there on the last point, Pastor Hudson, and get ready to close this message tonight and tell somebody this. I want to say this to somebody tonight, that God considers your history before he decides to use you. I'm, I'm going to say it again slowly. God considers your history before he decides to use you. What, what you saying, preacher? Where, where, where is that in the text? Remember, the text says that God called out to Moses, and he's called. He called his name twice. If I if I had time to preach, 
I would talk about sometimes when God uh, begins to use things emphatically and to say them twice, he's trying to get your attention in many moments. Like Jesus said, verily, verily, or truly, truly, or Samuel, Samuel. Uh, oftentimes when God speaks twice like that, he is reiterating what he has already said and trying to get your attention. In other words, he's putting his stamp and his seal on it. Oh, you let that go by you too fast. Uh, for some of you, it ain't that God called you one time at 12, but you went from 12 to age 35 and you ain't responded yet. So God let a crisis hit and the history of your experience while you were running is what God's going to use in this time right now so that you can begin to speak. I know what it's like. Oh, y'all y'all going to look at me like I got five heads. You know what it's like to be drunk out of your mind. You know what it's like to be high. You didn't know I knew you was looking at, like, looking at me like that through the screen. I see you in your living room. You know what it's like to have had a promiscuous past. You know what it's like to have had divorce experience. Matter of fact, you know what it is like to have been isolated. You know what it is like to have been confused. You know what it is like to be the least. You know what it is like to have been left out. God considers your history and he considers your history as a part of his pedigree, of your pedigree. So you can be used by God. Somebody type it in one more time for me. Can you hear it now? What that is, is it is the beckoning call of God telling you to come back to your roots, come back to his call, come back to his love, come back to his grace, come back to who he is and who he has promised you to be in your life. I say that it comes from the text. I can imagine a preacher watching me and say, he just isolated that in, Pastor Hudson. Uh, he didn't exegete that out of the text. Uh, don't speak on me and, and put the brakes on me too fast, because I'm going to jump right back in it and go to verses 7, 8, and 9. When God stops and talks to Moses, I feel my help coming in now. What he says to him is he says, uh, uh, I am the God of your father. Somebody type it in. Can you hear me now? Sometimes when God comes to you at 12, you don't think it's him. Then he comes again at 20, you don't think it's him. Then he comes to you at 30, you don't think it's him. So God says, I got to identify myself because you ain't heard me yet. I am the God of your father. I am the God of Abraham. Come on. Isaac, come on. Jacob, we love him as the God of Abraham, the man of faith. We can receive him as that God. We love him as the God of Isaac. Yeah, he's second in line in the bloodline. He is the promised child. But the Bible says, I feel preaching. If I had a hammer, and I would run through here, right through here right now. But the Bible says he is the God of Jacob. Where are all my Jacobs at tonight? All my tricksters and hustlers, all my all my two-sided coin people, all my people that's got a little something with them. I got to tell you that God still has his hand on you and he hadn't changed his mind about you. And it's because of the history of your pedigree that God expects to use you in all of these circumstances, all of these moments, all of these uh, uh, crisis moments in this pandemic, all of what you're experiencing is necessary. That's God trying to get your attention to say, will you hear my voice? I want to use you right now and right in this season. So I want to talk to some people tonight who are like Jacob. Let me share my screen one more time and then we're going to get from around here. I want to talk to some people tonight who, who are like Jacob who have been running from God, where your history has, has, has gotten in the way, if you will, or you think uh, that your history has gotten in the way uh, of God's pedigree in your life. No, I'm going to tell you tonight that God has considered your history. And as a matter of fact, God wants to use the history the way that it is right now so that he can tell his story and get the glory for himself through your that's life. Right. And so if, that, if, if, that's, if that's you tonight, then, preaching, then this sir. word is for you. I want to pray with you tonight. I want to pray with somebody tonight who is saying to themselves, my history, preacher, is in the way. That's why I can't recognize the holiness because my history is in the way. In my mind, my history is in the way God can't use me. Uh, I, I want to say to you tonight, you are the perfect candidate. You need some help. But you can't get the help you need on your own, in and of yourself, by yourself. You need the power of God. Moses didn't come to God. God came to him and got his attention. And I want to say to you tonight that what you're in right now 
is designed that God, by God to get your attention, to remind you of the call he's got on your life. It's not about the technology we use it. It's not about where we're in the building or not. Uh, mm -hmm. It's about you coming back to the Lord Jesus Christ. I got two groups of people I want to pray for tonight. Amen. I, I want to pray for the person you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You, you, you think that 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 shaking the preacher's hand makes you say, no, the Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, then you shall be saved. Come on in here, somebody. First John, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, then you shall be saved. If we confess our sin, he is faithful to forgive us of all our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I want to talk to somebody first. You don't know Jesus. And I want to pray for you tonight. And those of you who are watching me online tonight, watching me on stream, I want you to stop what you're doing right now. And I want you to begin to pray with me right now. And for those of you who are inside of the room, I see a few of those hands. I want you to begin to be prepared to pray for me right now. Second group, I want to talk to the believer who God came the first time. You didn't think it was him. He came the second time. You didn't think it was him. He came the third time. He sent me tonight to tell you this is me. The circumstance on the job ain't got nothing to do with your boss. It's me. The conflict in your family don't got nothing to do with your family members. It's me. The issue that you are facing with your children don't got nothing to do with them. It's me. I'm waiting on you to turn to me, say of the Lord. And I came tonight to pray with you so that God can get the glory out of your story. Would you come on and lock in with me tonight? Come on, would you would just lock in with me real quickly tonight? Let's begin to pray. Come on, those of you who are watching me, I want you to lock in with me. This is my way. This is me holding hands. I know we're practicing social distancing right now, but Pastor Hudson, I do this in my church while I'm streaming. This is how I lock hands with people right here. I just grab their hands tonight. Come on, I want to pray with you. If you're saying, I want to come back to Jesus tonight, if you're saying, I want to get saved tonight, then, then, then here, here, here it is. I want to begin to pray with you. Come on, begin to say these words after me. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I need a savior. Yes. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Save me. Wash away all my sins. I believe, God, that you have raised Jesus from the dead just for me. I want to make the change tonight. I want to believe you that you can use my history. Lord, I'm a believer, but I walked away from you, but I'm coming back to you tonight. And I'm giving you my heart, mind, soul, and spirit. Lord, would you use me in this season and in this hour? In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, somebody, say amen if you can. Amen. Listen, let me share this with you one more time tonight. Amen. If you prayed this prayer tonight, I got two things I want you to do. If you prayed this prayer, I want you, you can go to our website at dow.church, click on forms, or you can text the word believer, write it down real quickly. You can text the word believer to 40691. What's going to happen is a screen's going to open up. And as the screen opens up, you put your information in and then four more videos will pop up. It'll be me right from our site on your phone or tablet or desktop. I'm gonna be talking to you about what it means to be a believer in Christ Jesus. And listen, if you're in the Gloucester, York County, uh, uh, Williamsburg, if you're in Seaford, uh, uh, if you are even in Tappahannock, if you're along that 17 corridor or North Newport News, you need a church home. You need a pastor that loves God. You need a pastor that hears God's voice. You need a pastor with a clear word. Listen, I put his information on the screen. Our host pastor tonight, he's on his way back to greet us and to close us out tonight. This is his website, Pastor Daryl Hudson, this church uh, Morning Glory Baptist Church. There is the web address, morningglorygloucesterva.org. Morning Glory, I'm going to leave it on the screen so you can see it, glorygloucesterva.org, or you can connect with them on their Facebook page right there at facebook.com slash morningglorybaptistchurch. You can't miss them. I want to thank you for tuning in tonight. Would you receive Pastor Daryl Hudson as he comes back in now? to greet us and to prepare us to close. Uh, let's, give, let's give the Lord a, a hand clap of praise.
uh, for those that are, are live streaming with us, you can you can also just just hit the little smile and face. I want you just then your heart burn on tonight for the word that went forth by this man's servant, Bishop Elect Dr. Ray Johnson. We're certainly thanking and, and grateful to you as as God has led you on on our first night. And, and prior to closing out, I just want to remind our members uh, that those that would desire to be a blessing to this ministry, uh, you may cash app us at dollar sign, M-O-R-G-L-O-R-Y, dollar sign, more glory, uh, and, and our trustees will take care of that. And both those of you that will continue like to just to send in your revival donation, you may send it in to Morning Glory Baptist Church, 8956 Morning Glory Road, Gloucester, Virginia, 23061. You may mail it in, uh, and we'll be so kind. And, and just to know that you're sowing in good grounds, and we certainly thank and praise God uh, for, for an opportunity to bring a revival to you by virtual. And uh, we just thank and praise them. We could have been a lot of other places. We, we closed the church down, but, but guess what? The word of God still has to accomplish what it sets out to accomplish. It still has to go out, and it will not return void. And so we have got to be more creative in, in our efforts as it relates to getting the message uh, uh, out to God's people and not just closing the doors because of a, a pandemic, because God is bigger than a, a, any global pandemic. And so I need each of you and every one of you to know that. And so we thank and praise God for what has transpired on tonight. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. I'm, I can't wait for Amen. tomorrow night. I certainly thank Hallelujah. and praise God once again for Dr. Ray Johnson. I uh, thank and praise God for, for his minister of music, minister elect, uh, Alatex Kabibi, who has blessed our hearts, who has, has, has a beautiful voice, and God is using her and using them tremendously there uh, uh, in that ministry. And so we just thank and praise God. We continue to ask your, your prayers for, for Dr. Ray Johnson, uh, for his church family, uh, their Dominion Outreach Worship Center there at Newport News, uh, a church that's on fire for God, a church where everybody is somebody, where Jesus Christ is Lord. Will you bow with me, pause with me right there where you are, that we might close out on tonight. Benediction will be given on Thursday night. And just join in and remember to, to share the message on tonight with someone and to let others know that we have two more nights of revival. And I don't know about you, but we need to be revived. Amen. I said we need to be revived. I certainly want to thank uh, uh, Pastor uh, Benson Pryor. I know we've had some technology issues initially up front, but that's all right. God is still good. Our efforts are great. The word has still gone forth, and, and God alone uh, inhabits the praises of his people. Shall we pray? God, our Father, we just thank and praise you on tonight, God. I thank and praise you, God, for this man's servant that you've used mightily and bountifully on tonight, God. God, I ask that you restore all the virtues in him right now in the name of Jesus. Give him the proper rest that he needs on tonight, God, that he might come and speak a word to us on, to, on tomorrow night, God. We just thank and praise you right now for all the platforms that you've given us, God. Thank you for Facebook Live. Thank you for our Zoom, God. Thank you for our free conference call. Thank you for all those that have joined in with us, Father God. We pray your blessings upon all the families, Father God. We pray your blessings upon all the students as there are, some are making preparations to return to school. Some are, are look have some doubt, God, but you can't make me doubt them because we know too much about them. And so, God, we're praying for our young people, God, that they will be on one accord, God, that they will not walk in fear, that they will know that you're with them every step of the way, God. So we ask that you bless right now like only you can, God. And if someone received you on, on tonight, God, we just thank and praise you for that word, God. God, light a fire in them, God, to let them know, God, that now is the time. Now is the acceptable time to live a life that's pleasing unto Jesus Christ. Lord, we love you. We thank you for loving us. Thank you for shedding your precious blood. Thank you for making that ultimate sacrifice for us, God, because without you, God, God, we don't know where we would be. And so we thank and praise you right now. We ask that you bless all of those that came, uh, that were a part of this service on tonight. And we ask that they would join in with us again on tomorrow night and tell someone else about the revival. We just thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Praise amen. God. Yeah. Good night. We will see you on yeah. tomorrow night at 7 p.m. for our nightly virtue uh, summer revival. Morning Glory Baptist Church, Gloucester, Virginia, a place where everybody is somebody, a place where we like to say we give God all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. Be blessed, beloved. Be yes. blessed. Be blessed and be blessed. Right. God bless you. Good night.
Good night, everyone. Good.